here are our goals for the day. First of all, we hope to help you find your pathway or your college fit. We are gonna teach you some really amazing tools that you can use to get started right away with your college and career planning. Also, we'll discuss what careers might you be interested in pursuing and how do those relate to a college major. And then lastly, you'll be learning what you need to be doing now and over the summer to start your college and career planning. We're gonna start by talking about different pathways students will most commonly take after high school. Here you'll see listed different pathways to success. When we talk about different pathways, I just want to let you know that I don't think one pathway is better than the other, one college isn't better than the other. What you need to think about is what is the best fit for you individually, what types of careers are you interested in, and let that guide which pathway is the best fit for you. If you're not sure what you want to do after high school, that's totally okay. You're only a junior in high school. As you guys grow and learn new things about yourself, you might figure out that there's a different career path that's best for you. But for now, it is a good, a good time to reflect on what you're good at, what you like doing, what are you skilled at, and trying to find some different careers that would be a good fit for you. I know I'm really fortunate that I love my job, and I know that all adults don't love their jobs. But for you, I want you to hopefully pursue a job that you love and that you want to go to every day, because that can really impact you know, your overall well-being and how much you enjoy your day-to-day -day life. So I want you to find a job that you love. That's what's most important. If you need help with that, please reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Um, we also have link internship opportunities students can take for one term next year. If you haven't signed up for that and you have a career field in mind, it's a great way to figure out if that's something you like doing. You want to become a doctor or a nurse, you know, you can't do that while you're in high school. But what you could do is intern in a healthcare or health science field and just learn more about different types of jobs in that field. And that might help you um, be affirming and say, yeah, I do really love this. Or you might hate it. And that's great information <laughs> to figure out while you're in high school before you spend any money on college um, and, and finding out after the fact that you don't like that. We have a lot of different career assessments on Naviance that you can take to help you reflect and think about what would a good career fit be for you. And I love talking to students about this. So please let me help you in this process if you're still unsure. Some students might wanna go into the workforce right after high school. If you're thinking about careers that only require a high school diploma, then perhaps going into the workforce right after high school would be the best fit for you. Some of these types of jobs are working in a local union or in a manufacturing company. A lot of them will offer what's called an apprenticeship, which is a learn as you earn model. So you'll start out making money and they're gonna teach you how to do that job specifically. What's cool is that over time, you'll get to earn more money as you get more hands-on skills and ability and show that you can be successful in that type of job. I have a lot of local manufacturing companies calling me right now asking for our students who are graduating. They're making 15 plus dollars an hour at and they get full benefits and paid time off. So it can definitely, um, you can earn more money over time and this will also be enough money for you to live comfortably. A lot of these jobs you'll need a resume for. So I am here to help you in that process and we have a lot of different resources that students can take so that they can build their own resume. If you need help and you're thinking about going into the workforce right after high school, don't, feel, don't hesitate to reach out to me so that I can help you in this process. Um, some students might be thinking about going into the military. This is a good fit for students who want to travel the world, who are motivated and persistent, who show up every day, who like hard work and, you know, like being physically fit. It also might be a good fit for students who might just need a fresh start and, you know, don't want to go to college right away. But what's cool about going to the military is that afterwards they will often pay for a lot of your college. So this might be a good fit for you if what I'm saying is resonating with you right now. How to go into the military kind of has three different pathways. You could enlist right after high school. Um, you, while you're a senior, you're gonna to wanna to practice for the ASVAD, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. This is a, voc um, a standardized test, kind of like the ACT or SAT, but what's cool about it is it also assesses like your hands-on aptitudes and ability. So for some students, it's really affirming to finally see that, you know, while this test is, looking at math and science and English ability, they also get to see how they compare compared to their peers on hands-on type of activities. Um, not all students qualify for the military because they don't do well enough on the ASVAB, so it is important to start um, practicing early. Another way to enter the military is through a U.S. Military Service Academy. This is a really awesome opportunity. Um, if you're thinking about a service academy, go ahead and talk with me or your school counselor if you need to figure out more information about that. 
Um, a third way is doing ROTC at a college. Um, the Reserved Officer Training Corps is a great way for students to go to college right away, but also enroll in ROTC so that they can get some, you know, some extra, some extra training so that they can go into the military and still serve. We have this really cool video from one of our recent alumni um, who goes to U of I who's in ROTC. So if you're interested in learning more about ROTC, I'd be happy to send you that video if you reach out to me or you can reach out to your school counselor. Now let's talk about community college. Did you know that over 20% of BHS graduates start out at community college after graduating? What many students also don't know is that there are many different pathways that you can take in community college. For some students, the idea of going to college for four years just doesn't appeal to them and they wanna start their career a lot more quickly. If that's the case for you, you may wanna consider enrolling in a certificate program at a community college. With a certificate program, you can get the education that you need to start a career in things such as phlebotomy, computer-aided design, or even welding. Some students want to attend community college for two years to earn an associate's degree. With an associate's degree, you can get great careers in things like early childhood education, massage therapy, cybersecurity, amongst many others. And then lastly, many BHS students choose to start their college career at community college, earn their two-year associate degree, and then transfer that to a four-year university. One of the big benefits here is that you are only paying for university tuition for two years rather than for four years. If you plan on going this route, one of my biggest pieces of advice for you is take as many college prep classes as you can here at BHS and also take dual credit classes so that you are one step ahead of the game when you start out at community college. While there are many great community colleges out there, the one that is local to us is Wabonzi Community College, and there are campuses in both Sugar Grove and Aurora. If you're graduating early next year and you plan to start at Wabonzi in the spring, just keep in mind that you'll need to register on Wabonzi's website by early November next year. Now, if you aren't graduating early, your timeline is a little bit different. If you plan to start at WCC during the summer, you'll just need to register by March. And if you aren't attending until the fall, then you just need to register by April or early May. Now, if you're headed to Wabonzi, there are hundreds of incredible scholarships for Wabonzi students only. The Foundation Scholarship application opens up on their website in October, and then it closes in February. This is a really short window, so please make sure that you are applying for those Foundation Scholarships during this time, because they're the only way that you can get Wabonzi-specific scholarship money. Now, the best scholarship out there for Wabonzi is the Lucille Gustafson Scholarship. And with this scholarship, it is a full ride two year scholarship. If you're interested in this, please contact your school counselor and we can talk with you a little bit more about it. Now, you might be wondering, what is the difference between community college and four-year university? Well, the first difference is admissions requirements. At community college, they have what's called open admissions. As long as you have your high school diploma, you're admitted to community college. Now, a four-year university, there are different admission requirements, such as certain high school courses that you must have taken, certain GPAs, SAT scores, essays, and other type of requirements. The second big difference is living arrangements. Most community colleges do not have dorms and you would live at home or in an apartment off campus and commute. With universities, however, there are dorms and on-campus apartments for you. The third difference would be the degrees and the programs offered. I just spoke to you a little bit about a few of the degrees and the certificate programs that you can get at a community college. At universities, however, there is a much wider variety of programs, majors, and degrees that you can earn. Difference number four would be class size. Now, if you like a smaller class size, you like more interaction with your teacher, community colleges are going to give you that experience. Now with the university, plan to expect bigger classes and less professor interaction. Now difference number five, and probably one of the biggest, is cost. So let's discuss that. 
Here you can see the difference between the cost of a private four-year university, a public in-state university, and then a community college. As you can see, the cost for a private university like Aurora University is about $26,000, which is just for tuition and fees and doesn't include room and board. Now, a public in-state university like NIU is costing you a little over $12,000, so it's about half the price. And then Wabonzi, you can see it's the most affordable option on here, which is just a little over $3,000 a year. Now, please keep in mind that these are the sticker prices. There's lots of things that you can get like grants and loans by doing your FAFSA next year, and also scholarships and merit-based aid to lower the sticker price and make your college affordable as possible for you. If you are planning to attend a four-year university following high school, there are several factors to consider when building your list of colleges to apply to. First, thinking about the place or location of the school is key. Do you wanna stay relatively close to home so that you can visit family on the weekends? Or if you attend school across the country, are you okay with the fact that you will need to take an airplane back and forth when visiting home? Also consider the geographical location. Do you prefer living in a rural or sub or a suburban environment, or do you like the hustle and bustle of the city? You also need to consider personal preferences, such as how big or how small of a school you would like to attend. Do you want a campus, a smaller campus with around 2,000 students, similar to the size of Batavia High School, or do you like the feel of a very large campus with around 40,000 students? Think of class sizes. Do you prefer class sizes to be around 20 to 30 students, similar to what you have in high school, or are you comfortable having classes with more than 400 students, which you will find in many large universities? The program or major that you are planning to pursue for your intended career path is another big factor. You wanna end up at a college that is going to prepare you well for your career. After all, that's the main purpose of college, to prepare you for your career. For many families, the price or cost of a college is the most important factor. Understanding the cost of tuition at a college, as well as their scholarship opportunities, is very important when building your list of schools. In summary, when you are creating your list of colleges, consider your priorities in a school and let these priorities drive your search. Taking the time to research and investigate your schools will help you determine if a school seems like a good fit for you or not. Starting now and before you return for your senior year in August, you should be working to develop a list of three to eight colleges that you are planning to apply to. When creating your list, it's best to include one to three safety colleges. Safety schools are those in which a student's academic credentials, including a student's GPA and SAT or ACT scores, exceed the school's average range for incoming freshmen. Next, students should include one to three target colleges on their list. Target schools are those in which a student's GPA and SAT or ACT scores fall within the school's average range for incoming freshmen. Finally, students should put anywhere from one to three REACH colleges on their list. These are schools in which a student's GPA and SAT or ACT scores fall on the lower end or below the school's average. In a nutshell, we would like to see students with a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C when it comes to their college planning. We never wanna see a student without any college options based on it, how admission decisions come back. So if a student has safety target and reach schools on their list, it's providing that safety net that we are looking for. Let's take a minute to talk about what you should be doing now in this process. First, take some time to sit down and talk to your parents or guardians about the factors that will determine your post high school plans. Ask your parents what they see you doing following high school. If they would like to see you going to college, what are their priorities in a school for you? Although uncomfortable, talk to your parents about the financial piece of attending college. Do your parents have any money saved for you to go to college? Or are they willing to help support you with loans? Put simply, it's important that you get on the same page with your parents about your plans. Also, spend some time researching colleges and careers. Don't wait to start this step. Senior year will be here before you know it. Next, keep up with your classes and strive for the highest grades possible. When you apply to colleges at the start of your senior year in the fall, you will be sharing your cumulative GPA with colleges. 
your cumulative GPA includes your grades from freshman through junior year. So whatever your GPA is at the end of junior year is what your colleges will be reviewing. If you are planning to pursue an apprenticeship in the trades, these programs will also look at your GPA. Let this piece of information motivate you as you finish out the spring semester, finish out as strong as you possibly can. Finally, as you are building your list of potential colleges, make sure your senior year courses are meeting your college's entrance requirements. Do you have enough science credits, world language credits, and so forth? Do your colleges require fine arts credits that you might not have? If you are short on any entrance requirements, talk to your counselor as soon as possible so that we can work to build in the necessary credits into your senior year schedule. Another tip, create a personal email account separate from your BHS email to help manage your college applications. Your BHS email is turned off after graduation, so it's important that you keep important emails you will need down the road in a separate account. Finally, clean up your social media accounts. It's very common for college admission counselors to view your social media accounts similar to how an employer would research you if you were interviewing for a job. Make sure your pictures and your posts highlight you in a very positive way. Next, we're going to talk about what the resources are available to students to help them find their fit for after high school. Let's start by talking about what are some of the resources to help students figure out their fit for college or after high school. If you're not sure what you're looking for in a college and you don't know how which colleges to apply to because you're not sure what you're looking for, I have two suggestions. Number one is create an account on Coursava.com, and this is free, complete a values card sort. This will at least help you figure out what are some of the things you're looking for in a college. Second would be to do college visits. Even if you're not wanting to stay local, sometimes it's just easier to get on some college campuses around here before you set up travels far away. For example, if you want to go to a public university, go to NIU or UIC, and this will give you an idea of what a big school is going to look like at a, at a public school. You could also go to some smaller private colleges around here, like Aurora University or North Central or Wheaton College, just to sit, figure out if you want a big school or a small school, if you want to be in the city or in a suburb. And those are some of the big factors that will help you start narrowing down what types of colleges might be a good fit for you. If you're not sure what types of careers you're interested in, um, you can take some additional assessments on Naviance. We have done the career cluster and the career interest profiler in um, freshman and sophomore year, but there's another one called Do What You Are on Naviance and some road trip nation videos students could look at. Follow up with me or another trusted adult if you are still stuck and not sure what your next steps are as far as a career and you want to figure that out. If you're trying to figure out what college major is a good fit for you, go to mymajors.com and create a free assessment and that will help you figure out what careers might be a good fit for you and what majors might be a good fit for you as well. And just learning more about different types of majors. Again, I'm here, your junior senior counselors are here to help you in this process. Hi, my name is Julie Nelson. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admission at Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. And Ms. Buttles asked me to talk a little bit about how you're going to find the right fit college for you. I really think that fit comes in three flavors. The first flavor is academic fit. Not only are you looking for a place that's going to have a program that interests you, but you wanna find a place where you are a good academic match. So certainly when I look at your application, when I read your transcript, I wanna see that you've taken the right classes, that you've prepared yourself well, so that you can be successful in my program. You know, there aren't very many schools that are gonna be looking to see like exactly, you know, how many AP classes or how many dual credit classes. They're really trying, again, to make that match academically between you and their institution. The second form of fit really comes in the social fit. And I'm not talking just about what happens on Friday night on a college campus, because I don't care where you go, it happens, right? But what I'm talking about is how are you going to find your friends? How are you going to find those people that you'll start to create a new community with? You know, and so maybe that's an activity that you've already done at BHS. Maybe it's something that you've wanted to try for a while and just didn't have that opportunity. So when you go on college visits, when you get those brochures, take a look at the offerings that that school has for you to get involved. 
And the last way I think you should think about fit is from a financial standpoint. I know as juniors, you're probably getting a lot of emails, a lot of brochures. And if you look just at the cost listed on that brochure, remember that that's the cost before any financial aid or scholarships. So don't get nervous and think, oh my gosh, I could never afford any school. Really work with folks like me to help you figure out what your options are. And that's my last piece of advice for you. No matter where you're looking, there's somebody that does my job. There's somebody that represents the institution to the Bulldogs of Batavia High School. So get to know us, let us help you in this process, and best of luck finding that right fit school for you. I'm going to provide just a really broad overview of financial aid terms. When you Google to see how much a college costs, you're going to see what's called the sticker price. And this is not necessarily how much the college actually costs to go there, so don't let that shock you. Um, we, want to un we want to understand that students might get grants, scholarships, work study, and even student loans to pay for college. College grants are free money that students do not have to pay back, and they're typically awarded to students who demonstrate financial need or are from lower income families. Typically, if a student's on fee waiver or free or reduced lunch, that's an indicator that they might get free grants, free money for college called grants. Just a little tip is if you're a student who um, maybe gets free lunch or fee waiver here and is likely to get a grant for college, make sure you have some colleges in Illinois on your list because there's an, a grant called the MAP grant that's awarded to students from Illinois going to colleges in Illinois. Um, that is about $5,000 of free money, so definitely consider applying to some colleges in Illinois. And if this, is, if this resonates with you, make an appointment with me or your junior senior counselor to make sure that you have a college list that represents colleges that will take that MAP grant. Scholarships are free money for students who do that do not need to be repaid. This is usually given to you based on your academics, some type of athletic scholarship, it goes directly to the college and does not need to be repaid. Federal work study is earned money, and this is um, something that students get when they complete the FAFSA. If you check that you want to be considered for federal work study, this is typically just working on campus and getting paid for, by your college um, in the form of, of because you're working there. And student loans um, are money that you do have to pay back but are awarded to students when you complete the FAFSA. As you begin to learn more about colleges, you're gonna to wanna to know about college admissions types. You're gonna to wanna to look and see when their applications are due, when are their, um, their admissions deadlines. So most of our students aim to apply via early action. Um, the most common deadline is November 1st for college applications early action, and this will put you in the first pot to be considered um, accepted to their college. Early decision is a binding agreements and most of our students do not apply early decision. This is saying if I apply early decision, I certainly want to go there if I am accepted. Um, you can only apply to one college that way. Regular decision is usually a later deadline. Um, sometimes you might miss internal scholarship deadlines if you apply regular decisions. So you're going to want to make sure that you know the scholarship process at the college as well. And generally advising students to apply early action, um, typically November 1st, is just something to be mindful of. Let's talk about how to research colleges, which is an essential part of junior year if you're looking at four-year colleges. The first step is to research online. Look at the college's website, review the college admission standards and requirements, take a look and see what the average student profile is there. What was the middle 50% of students GPA and or test scores to see how you line up. Some of the websites that we like are Naviance, College Board, College Express, but there are many others that you might choose to use. Step two is setting up virtual visits. There are websites where you can vir virtually visit a college like UVisit, Campus Real, also looking at YouTube for the college's official YouTube, um, and also talking with your college admissions representative virtually is a great idea to learn about the college before you set up that in-person visit. The college admissions staff are the people who review your application and are the expert on that school. So make sure to connect with them by phone or virtually. So that way we'll also demonstrate interest, which is a part of the holistic college process. 
The step three is in-person college visits, and this is really the gold standard and essential way to determine whether or not a college is a good fit for you and if that feels like home. While these are in three steps, it's not always so linear. You might research a college online, do a virtual visit, and then get on campus and realize you don't actually like it. And so that would be going back to step one to find more colleges that would be a good fit for you. Um, we encourage students to apply to three to 10 colleges while they are a senior. Visiting a campus is really the best way to figure out if that college is a good fit for you and if that could be your future home. Sometimes there is even scholarships for a visiting colleges, such as at Lake Forest and Augustana College. This will also demonstrate interest, which is a part of the holistic college application review. And most students find this to be very fun, especially when they're visiting a college that they like. There are a lot of ways to visit when we have days off, such as President's Day or Veterans Day um, over spring break. Visiting um, when you have time off of school, a lot of colleges will be doing open houses and you can find that information on their website. We encourage students and families to make official visits when visiting colleges versus just dropping by. This way the admissions staff know you're coming and they'll be ready to talk to you about their college. If you're thinking about what career is the best fit for you, we still encourage you to sign up and do official visits. Um, perhaps you want to go into an apprenticeship, then doing a visit to the apprenticeship training center would be awesome to learn what that really looks like and talking with people who work there. Um, just trying to utilize all of the days off that we have during the year, whether it's spring break or Christmas break, um, and setting up visits and talking with them, knowing that students are allowed three planned visit absences. Ask a lot of questions. Um, we have a resource linked here for meaningful questions to ask. Um, and also knowing that there are typically college fairs throughout the year too, um, generally in October, January, and March. And that way you can talk with hundreds of people of different colleges or sometimes careers as well in trying to make the most of those opportunities as you're trying to figure out which place is best for you. And for all of our students trying to figure out what career the best would be your best fit, I encourage you to job shadow or do an informational interview. So this looks like talking to someone who does the job and then job shadowing will be visiting them in person. So if you know someone who does that job, talking to them about it formally is encouraged. If you don't know someone who does the job that you're interested in, you can reach out to me or to your parents, guardians, family members to try to figure out someone who does. So reach out to me if you're struggling to find someone who does the job you're interested in and I can try to help. Also looking at our job shadowing guide that we have in this presentation will also be helpful to make the most of this experience. So what are colleges looking for? Um, based on a study that I've read of thousands of colleges submitting, First and foremost, they're looking at your high school transcript. They want to see what classes you've taken, if you've challenged yourself, and how you've done in those classes. They're also going to take a look at your ACT and SAT next if you're submitting test scores. Students often ask us which one they should take, the SAT or the ACT, and it's really up to the student. If you can take a practice test in both, see how you do, if you do better on one or the other percentile-wise, and then spend your time studying on that one. Other factors colleges are looking at are like extracurricular activities, if they have letters of recommendation required, if you need an essay or a writing sample, and your demonstrated interest, since colleges really want students applying there who have taken time to research their college and making sure it's a good fit for both. Always take a look at the college's website to see what they're looking for in students and you talking with their college admissions professionals as well. Not all colleges are looking at the exact same things though, um, so make sure you're researching to see what your college you're applying to is looking for. Generally speaking, some of, the, of our liberal arts colleges are more so looking at that essay, demonstrated interest. More highly selective colleges really get to handpick their students. Um, so what they're looking for, we don't always exactly know and it's hard for us to tell. At a lot of large universities with thousands of applicants as well, they're mostly just looking at your GPA, your high school transcript, and your test scores. Now let's talk about scholarships. When prioritizing your scholarship search, here's how we encourage students to do so. Number one is looking at the colleges where you're applying to and seeing how they award scholarships. 
Sometimes applying to the college with a college application is also your scholarship application because they're just giving college your scholarships based on your application, your grades, your transcript, and things like that. Sometimes they invite students separately to apply for scholarships after they are admitted. So be mindful of deadlines and that internal process at each school and how they award scholarships since it can vary college to college. Number two is completing the FAFSA. This is the free application for federal student aid. This is how students will get any need-based money called grants, borrowed money, which is loans, or earned money in the form of work study. Number three is looking for local scholarships. We post all local scholarships on a Google Doc that will be in your um, Google Classroom and on the website, the Counseling and Advising website that is, as well as on Naviance. Generally speaking, most of these are posted in the winter months, like November, December, January, February time. Um, additionally, students will look for any local or community scholarships. So if your parents are involved in something in the community, like the Lions Club, or perhaps your church gives away scholarships, checking with any connections you or your family have to see if there are additional scholarship opportunities. Last is the national scholarship search. Um, for example, you can just Google how to find scholarships and you'll probably find a website. One, some are Unigo, Going Mary, and there are many, many others. You create a profile and then you, they will match you with scholarships. My only hesitation here in why it's last in the scholarship search process is if Coca-Cola has a $20,000 scholarship, students from all over the United States might be applying for it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't apply for it, it should just be last on your list um, in prioritizing your time, what you should be applying for. So all scholarships are basically not able to be completed until students are seniors. So just be mindful of this process and use your time diligently. So now you might be wondering, what should you be doing over the summer before your senior year of high school? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that you are really thoroughly researching all of your colleges and all of your post-secondary options over the summer. Before you come into school your senior year, you really want to make sure that you have narrowed your fit or created a list of colleges or post-secondary areas of study that you're going to consider. Also over the summer, it's the perfect time for you to volunteer, to job shadow, to get a job or even an internship, and to really become involved in community organizations. When you go to apply to college, oftentimes they are going to ask you about your extracurricular activities. Basically, what did you do to get involved in the community in which you belong? Also over the summer, this is the perfect time for you to start drafting your college essay. The great thing is those college essay prompts for the Common App, they are live. They are live now, and they usually don't change from year to year. So over the summer, when you have a lot of time on your hands, start writing your essay. I can't tell you how many seniors that I've spoken with who have told me that was the best advice that they got because it's one less thing that they have to worry about their senior year, and they are ready to start knocking out those applications when they go live. So try to get your college essay done over the summer before your senior year. Senior year will be here before you know it. So it's very important for you to know what to expect that's going to take place during the fall of your senior year. Get ready for an exciting fall because this is college application season. All of the colleges will be opening their application portals beginning in August or September of your senior year. Just to give you a piece of advice here, if you can, try to fill out all of your general information, such as your name, address, courses, things like that, in your Common App in advance so that when those application portals open, you can hit the ground running and submit your application without having to wait. Also, that's another reason why getting your essay done over the summer will allow you to go ahead and start and finish, hopefully, your application season with a lot less stress. Something to keep in mind is that our seniors typically have solidified their list of schools that they are applying to by fall of their senior year, and they've really started making progress toward completing the applications. Something to keep in mind is the first priority deadline for college applications 
usually happens around November 1st. So keep that in mind that you want to make sure that you're completing your applications as early as possible because when you complete them by the priority deadline, it not only gives you the greatest chance for admission, but oftentimes a greater opportunity for merit-based aid. Here is our college application timeline so that you have a month-by-month -month framework of what to expect your senior year. Those college applications, they open early, August 1st to September 1st. October 1st is when the FAFSA opens. The FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. The FAFSA is the one and only way that you can qualify for grants and loans to pay for college through the federal government. We recommend that every student, regardless of need, completes the FAFSA. Keep an eye out for the November 1st and November 15th college deadlines. Colleges call this the early action, early decision, or even the priority deadlines. A little insider piece of advice here is that colleges do not have unlimited money to give out in the form of scholarships. So when you apply by the priority deadline, it does give you a better shot at that merit-based aid. Now, November to December, this is when you want to aim to have your FAFSA completed. It is known that the state of Illinois can also run out of money as well. So you want to make sure if you're eligible, get your application in before winter break. Now, December to January, this is where you're going to see most college application deadlines. Really keep an eye on your email for communication from the colleges so that you don't miss the deadline for application because they will rarely make an exception if you're late in submitting your application. December to March, this is when your financial aid package is sent out from the college so that you can get an idea of how much you earned in merit-based aid and also how much you'll be getting in need-based aid to kind of find out that total cost of attendance for college so that you and your family can really plan. And then May 1st, this is the national notification deadline. You may have heard it called decision day, and this is when students tell their colleges that they intend to go there. We know that the college application process is a lot, and that is why we, your counselors, are here to help you every step of the way. Today, you are starting off on the right foot by attending the junior college and career presentation, and we really hope that the information that you're listening to today can really help you get the ball rolling in the right direction. Now, your senior year, we will start it out with a great senior college and career presentation. And in that presentation, you will receive videos and links that is going to help you with every part of the college application process. It also gives you some great videos and resources to support you along the way. Every Friday in the fall, seniors are welcome to attend college help sessions. And we host those for all seniors to come down. You don't even need a pass to get help with your college applications and for your counselors to answer any questions that you might have about the process. Also, we'll be hosting a lot of college preparation events and workshops during your junior year and your senior year as well. These workshops include things like college essay writing and how to find scholarships. We also have the support of ISAC, which is the Illinois Student Assistance Commission, and they'll be able to provide you with help on completing your FAFSA and other ways to get financial aid for college. One other piece of advice here is please, please make sure that you're reading your emails. Those college and career newsletters are going to provide you with valuable advice on your senior year college planning steps. Also, we will make a lot of announcements to let you know about things like college rep visits and important college events that are happening here at BHS. We have a lot of help for you. You are always welcome to talk to your counselor, email them to make an appointment, and we would love to sit down with you and help you with your college process. Also, Mrs. Buttles is fantastic about providing students with college and career counseling. So please reach out to her for support as well. First thing I'm going to show you is how to access the BHS College Dashboard. We created the BHS College Dashboard because students were asking us a lot of the same questions. So we decided together as counselors to write down all of the things that students need to know and their most frequently asked questions um, about the topics that they wanted to know about. How do you get there? Here on the BHS website, go to Students and then click College Dashboard. 
so that students and families can look through this whenever they want, um, wherever they are. Here is each topic in these white boxes. So go ahead and click on which one you want to learn about more. Here you'll see the college timeline for seniors. At the bottom is a detailed college list um, or a, a document so you can go through and see exactly what you should be doing in more detail. You click the yellow button to go back to the dashboard. How to find a college fit. We recommend that students utilize Naviance, our college planning platform, and go to the Supermatch. And this will help you figure out which colleges would be a good fit for you. Additionally, you can um, click this document at the bottom, and this will kind of walk you through different things to consider, and also has resources embedded into it. How to connect with colleges. Connecting with colleges is an essential part to determine which college is the best fit for you, and you can learn about the college and see get all of your questions answered. There are different, a lot of different ways that you can do that, and here's a step-by-step -step tutorial how to get on the college's communication list. A lot of students want to know how to request transcripts. The directions are all written out here, and you can follow it along with a step-by-step -step video tutorial. Students are also asking a lot about how to write a college essay. We found the most valuable resources and put them on here on this website. College Essay Guy is personally my favorite. Um, all of his exercises have helped a lot of my students, um, so I really think that you should start there. We have a written document and a linked recording. Um, they're all housed also at the bottom, so you can save that. You can create a resume in Naviance for free, and this is the steps to do that. How to request letters of recommendation in Naviance, all written out in a video tutorial. Students are often asking how to prioritize their scholarship search list. So this document I think is really important to look through. The first thing you wanna do is look at the college that you're applying to and how do you get their scholarships. Complete the FAFSA. This opens October 1st. We encourage students to complete it by November or December. All of our local scholarships are in Naviance. Um, check with local or community scholarships. This could be places of work or different organizations you or your family are involved in. And then go ahead and look at national scholarship searches. This is where students all across the U.S. are applying for these big scholarships, but are less likely to get them because thousands of students are applying for them. I have additional tips listed here, special programs, so take a look at this. Test optional and virtual tours, all the information listed here, how to do that. Fairtest.org is the hub to determine if colleges are gonna be test optional or not, meaning that you don't have to submit an SAT or ACT score to be considered to their college. Virtual college tours is a good first step, and here are some websites where you can look at different colleges online and seeing if it's a good fit for you. Using Common App. Common App has 900 colleges on it for one application. If you're applying to three or more colleges that are on Common App, then we recommend you use Common App. You can see um, a step-by-step -step tutorial here, how to connect it with your Naviance account. And then also this Common App step-by-step -step guide is super helpful as well. This is the BHS College Dashboard. It is a great resource and we encourage all students to utilize it.